Welcome back, everybody. Happy to be here with you and with Maria Arias, Molly, my cousin, licensed professional counselor, play ch children therapist, and parent coaching. Um, so we were thinking about how it is that play is really important in the life of children. And more and more, we see less time for play within the academic setting and within the home setting. And this, I see it as, especially when I think of what, what we've been talking about, Molly, which is the regulating of the brain and how it is that we process our emotions through play. There's so much stress going on and yet there's not enough time for play because we have to do all the important things because we are a, you know, a society that focuses on production and you know, even our being is a production. I was thinking about an example that my daughter gave a few days ago where she was talking about um, this one child that you know, she knows that you know, got a Fitbit and this kid is I think nine years old and he was so concerned if he had gotten his steps in instead of just yeah. go out and run and play and have fun. Yeah. And this production system is affecting even how we learn, I believe, but I'm not sure what the process is behind. Oh. And, and that's where you come in. So here comes your expertise, show us. Yeah, thanks, Donna. It's so important, you know, like that we, that we allow play and that we value play, right? And then even when children are playing, like you said, sometimes we wanna count it and quantify it, right? So everything we wanna put a number on to make sure it's worthy. But play has another function of helping our brain to heal and to process emotions and to connect. So children use play for all of those things. So re repeat the three of them, because that's really important if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, so to process emotions and to, um, I forgot what those, I think to, to, to integrate things, you know, to explore and to, to relax, to process emotions and to connect with each other or with themselves, right? I, I love the idea of connecting with themselves, especially, but I mean, yeah. if, if I connect with myself, it's gonna be easier for me to connect with somebody else. And I do see that because lots of times the kids that, are more active and you know and know how to play actually do engage well with their playmates and actually you know do well and as i'm saying that i'm thinking of this so i i take my granddaughter to swimming lessons and there was this one little kid that really broke my heart he didn't know how to engage with other kids and you know me being the teacher that always wants to make sure that everybody is included and that everybody is loved he came up to her very shyly and said, you know, can I play? And she, you know, she was playing with, you know, like these little cars that they, you know, move around and stuff. And I was like, go ahead and play, you know? So, you know, so she did, she looked at me and something inside her was saying, no, this isn't right. But here I am, the adult saying, no, include him, include him. And, you know, you know that feeling, you know, we want everybody to be participant. And anyway, yeah. so what ended up happening was that as soon as she said yes, he started bossing her around. Oh, he yeah. He did not know how to play. He was actually mimicking in many ways what he saw at home of, you need to do it this way. You need to do the move the car this way. You need to, well, that's not play. That's not engaging. And it really was like a put off. So I finally just said, you know, we've got to go. And you know, Lynette, let's get going. It's, it's time for us to get going. And yeah. he said goodbye very nicely. And, but I felt bad for this child. He did not know how to engage. You know, it's like you're saying, because you're, um, you know, you're also a childhood expert and as teachers and as librarians and as professionals, uh, mental health professionals like I am, we use play as an assessment of health and well-being. Are we able to play? Is the child able to play? And um, it's not, the answer is not always yes. No. And so we really have to feel safe to play. Um, I remember my, one of my best friends, he adopted four cats. He, he was just fostering them, but they ended up becoming permanent. It was a mom cat and three kittens. And uh -huh. he would play and play with them. And the kittens began to engage and they play with each other and they play with him. But it took the mom a long time to be able to engage and play with him. And I said, you see, it's like play is not automatic. So the mom had been maybe through some tough situations, the mama cat, mm -hmm. um, that's how she ended up like being a foster cat. So now she plays, but it took him a long time 
to heal that and, and to build the relationship enough so that she would start to play. As you say that, I'm thinking of this example. When I was in, back in Houston where I used to live, I was going through a divorce and I would come home from teaching and from going to university and all these different things. And, you know, my daughter, I was starting to have problems with her act out, acting out. And one of the things that I did, and it was very hard for me, was that I would say, okay, honey, we are setting up a timer. And from this time to this time, mom is going to play with you. And I would sit down and literally play very begrudgingly, not because I didn't want to spend time with her, because I didn't remember how to play. Yeah. It was one of those things. And as we moved forward, you know, then I could start playing with the little Polly Pockets and, you know, making my little voices and she would make her voices with her Polly Pocket, but we were able to start engaging in the game. And the sooner I got started really allowing myself the pleasure of playing with my daughter at the Polly Pockets where I would hold the one and she would tell me, you know, whatever. It started, her behavior started improving drastically because as you know, children do go through trauma as, you know, parents separate and it's natural, but it's how we come back and give them that play for that emotion. And it was funny because as you're saying this, you know, she would say little things with her little dolls, you know, because it was a doll that was talking. But she would, you know, give voice to what the, the, you know, what she was feeling through the doll. And I would be able to answer back in kind, like, oh, if you're feeling sad, well, you know, can you tell me more about it? And it was, you know, two little dolls, but, yes. and, it, and it became healing for her and for me as well. So I do understand the point of playing, allowing, you know, children to play and say what they feel through their play. Absolutely done. It's like we get to deal, play is a safe place where we get to deal with things that are too hard to deal with directly sometimes. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. And it's, it's, we really need to have ourselves tap into that emotional part of us where we are actually rejoining that inner child of us that's saying, hey, there's something really important here that goes on. Not everything is production not everything your worth is not based on what you do and what you perform but your worth is based on you just being a simple human being i think that that is a really key important that as human beings we forget about and we really need to bring back home yes i think that setting and meeting goals is so important and having appropriate challenges is so important to us because it inspires us but at the same time we cannot build our worth on all of those things like you're saying. And so there's so many pressures that we live with from the outside that we're unaware of. Like we have to constantly be happy. We have to constantly be healthy. We have to constantly, constantly, constantly. But the fact is that to meet challenges and to, um, and to, to, you know, to be inspired in our lives, we have to break it up with play. And, that, and so let's not forget the importance of that. So let's leave it with that. And yeah. we will see each other next week. Thank Sounds you, good. Yes, thank you for joining us.